Welcome to the World History One Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a 10-second delay. Use this time to pause the presentation and complete your notes. When you are done, push play and you will move forward. This lecture will begin in 5 seconds. Welcome to World History One Lecture 2.5 on the effects of Egyptian civilization, and here is your typical American tourist. Oh boy, this is embarrassing. But despite the fact of the way Joe Bag of Donuts looks, we might be able to find some characteristics and effects in this picture. Let's check it out. One characteristic is a proper geographic setting. We already learned last class that isolation affects Egypt's development. We're not going to find that in this picture. We also learned that organized government is a characteristic of civilization. Well, he's dressed like a pharaoh. We know from prior experience that pharaohs are in charge of Egypt. How about the development of urban society? Check out those pyramids. We have sophisticated buildings. How about organized religion? He is holding a religious item in his hand. That is an onk he's got right next to his chest. Division of labor? Well, he's clearly in charge with that staff, the staff of Ra. And our last characteristic class structure? He sure doesn't look like a slave to me. So I guess we could title this picture, I went to Egypt and all I got was this lousy, but historically correct, picture. Let's move on and look at the details when it comes to the effects of Egyptian civilization. Go to the next slide. The ancient Egyptians were masters at defining roles within their civilization, and it all begins at the top. The rulers in Egypt are called pharaohs. That literally translates as great house, and they are large and in charge. It's the pharaohs in charge of Egypt and nobody else. Now, rulers in Egypt, they inherited their right to rule by being born into the ruling family. You didn't have to be particularly good at anything to rule Egypt. You just had to be born into the right family. And the pharaohs are really powerful because they have both political and religious authority. They're not just the political leaders of Egypt, but they are considered gods among their people. That is ultra powerful. And this power extends to priests as religious and government powers are combined together. We call this type of government a theocracy. It's not just the politicians you're dealing with or the law. It's the law and the religious law. Go to the next slide. There is one major advantage of putting one person in charge of both the government and the religion. You see, pharaohs can bind their power into one central government. And that government was located in one place and ruled from the top down. In other words, everyone eventually answered to the pharaoh. No matter where you were in the government, no matter what you did in the religion, everybody was ultimately responsible to one person. And this allows for things like developing relationships with local civilizations. We're going to talk about this civilization, the Nubians. The Egyptians are going to develop a relationship with the Nubians, but only because the pharaoh controls the dialogue. The pharaoh controls how that relationship develops. It's easier to speak with authority when one person is doing the talk. Go to the next slide. The rest of the ancient Egyptian class system is detailed and complex, and as you can see, it has multiple levels. Let's start at the top with the pharaoh. This is the undisputed political and religious ruler in Egypt. Right underneath the pharaoh are government officials and priests. These are people who are loyal to the pharaoh and carry out his wishes. 
fact, the Pharaoh's second in command, the visor, he's in this class. Underneath these officials are soldiers. These are people who fought for the Pharaoh voluntarily or were conscripted. You will fight for the Pharaoh. We're making you do it. Underneath the soldier are scribes. These are people who kept records and supervised the day-to-day -day operations of the civilization. Only scribes and priests could read and write. So scribes are very important in this civilization. Under the scribes are the merchants. They trade and sell goods. They are considered the middle class in ancient Egypt. That's why they're right in the middle of the pyramid. Under the merchants are artisans. These are skilled laborers, sculptors, painters, carpenters, goldsmiths. They do this year round. Underneath the artisans are farmers. They farm for part of the year and for the rest of the year they're working as unskilled laborers. Most of the time they're working on large government projects, pyramids, tombs, palaces. And on the bottom of our class system are slaves. This is involuntary servitude. These slaves are forced to work against their will. They do whatever the authorities in Egypt want them to do. Go to the next slide. The religion of the ancient Egyptians is almost as complicated as the Egyptian class system. The Egyptian religion was polytheistic to the extreme with many different gods. Just on that chart are 27 different gods, including the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was a god on earth who connected the Egyptians to their gods. In other words, the Pharaoh has ultimate religious authority because he's the only one talking to the gods. And if he doesn't like what you did, he's going to tell the gods to do something about it. Now, we also have some buildings that come from the religion. Pyramids and obelisks are built for religious purposes and as memorials to the pharaohs. We also have tombs in those pyramids. We know about those already. Look at the obelisk. It's the thing that looks like the Washington Monument. So we have a little bit of ancient Egyptian civilization here in our civilization. Go to the next slide. Since the Egyptians created such a complex civilization, they're going to have to develop some reading and writing to keep everything in order. And the Egyptians develop hieroglyphics. Glyphs are symbols that show a word or letter. And you use glyphs almost every day. For example, when you go to the bathroom, there's either the little guy or the little girl on the front door to tell you which bathroom is the men's room and which bathroom is the ladies' room that's a glyph. The Egyptians also write something called the Book of the Dead. This is the world's first instruction manual and it deals with how to properly bury dead folks. Go to the next slide. Remember I told you that Egypt was around for a very long time? Well, Egyptian civilization becomes so advanced that they develop things in areas like science and medicine, including the Egyptian calendar. Not that calendar, the Egyptian calendar. It's one of the first attempts to keep track of time on a larger scale. The Egyptians also focus on medicine, and Egyptian medicine is an early form of scientific treatment. Basically, we're going to treat somebody based on what we know about human beings, not based on what the gods are telling us. This works so well that some techniques are adopted in the Renaissance. That's it for this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.